Right, so there's a lot of interest in e-bikes, and it's no surprise it's the last, last mile journey, isn't it? It's that bit from the station to work, or station to home, or down to Asda, whatever it is. But there's a tremendous amount of interest. Now, there was an American company that tried to create a universal kit, a kit that you could strap onto any bike, and you'd be able to turn it into an e-bike. Now, it was great with only one slight problem. It was the same price as a hub motor kit. So lots of people thought, well, why bother? Just get a hub motor and bolt a hub motor in and you're away. And I thought the same too. So that particular product launch, which was a Kickstarter campaign, failed. And I'm not surprised because it was just too expensive when it came to buying the kit. But the concept, the concept was really simple. And I thought we'd give it a go replicating it as a universal kit that can be bolted onto any bike to turn that bike into an e-bike. I mean, it sounds almost like unicorns and leprechauns, doesn't it? But I liked the concept and I thought that it actually would work. Now, you don't need that much. What you need is one of these. It's an angle attachment for a drill. I bought this on eBay for £10. What it does, it takes a normal drill and turns that rotation 90 degrees, which is pretty cool. You also need this, which is a, a large caster wheel. This is the kind of thing you find on a shopping trolley. You can buy them for about five pounds in the big box store and then rate it about 150 kilos. Now, given I weigh 80 kilos and the bike weighs a few kilos more, it's gonna be able to take the load because the bike's not sitting on it, I'm sitting on it. So it should be able to take that load, no worries at all. So those two things are the essential things you need. You do, of course, need one of these, which is an electric drill, because this is an electric drill powered kit. Now, I'm not going to include that in the price because basically just about everybody's got one of these. It's the kind of thing that you buy when you're building up your toolkit. The first thing you buy is an electric portable drill. So loads of people have one of these and I think that that shouldn't be included. It's just these two bits we're looking at. So we're looking at about £15. And of course the question then is how do you turn this into a drive system for an e-bike? Well the first thing to do is to make that a drive wheel. So this spins on those two plastic plates in there. In order to make this a drive wheel, what we need to do is fix those plates and give it an axle. So I have cut a square of metal, drilled four holes in it, and an eight millimetre hole in the centre, and I've got a bit of eight millimetre rod. So I'm going to drive that onto there, weld it on, and then that will go through there. Then I can drill through, put some bolts on it, and we'll have a drive wheel. When we drilled that and bolted it up, what we end up with is a drive wheel. Okay, now we've turned it into a drive wheel, we can actually stick that in there. This is one of those Blue Peter moments, isn't it, where I should have got it ready. Anyway, we can stick that in there, and of course with the right distance, and we'll chop it off in a minute, we turn that, it turns that. I flattened the edge of this, incidentally, because the original one here has a little dome to it. So I took that in the drill, put a bit of sandpaper and made that flat. But that, believe it or not, is the universal drive for converting any bike into an e-bike. OK, I went and grabbed myself a bit of shelving, 50 by 25, chopped off a centimetre because this lot rests on there. So that bit rests there like that. And we have made the thing that these guys were trying to sell for $150 and it's cost us about £15. Obviously that bit, the steel bit, is the bit that fits to the bike. So we need to strap that on and fit that to the bike. Okay, so there it is fitted to the bike with a couple of hose clips. Only because Luke banned me from drilling holes in the frame, which I personally think is mean of him, but I'm still banned from doing it. So got a couple of hose clips there. And then this wheel has a bearing on the other side that's on a bit of threaded bar and that connects to the axle where, where the stay is. It goes the same bolt hole where the axle goes through the stay. That keeps the wheel rigid. The drill just gets attached onto there. Now obviously we want some kind of switch. So what we've got here is a bit of brake cable with the original brake handle. And I've taken a bit of chrome bar and now if I squeeze against that chrome bar it will pull this brake cable. So this brake cable will go in this nut here, and this nut was stolen from the brake, so it's got a feed through, goes in there, comes round the original switch, and then through that little angle bracket that's connected to the body here, so that when I pull on that handle, it will pull that, which will operate the switch, and then the spring brings it all back again. So let's install the handle. 
Okay, so there it is in place with the spring going through that angle, round the switch there and to the locking nut right there. So if I pull on the handle, then we have a throttle control. Ready? Yep. Let's give it a go. Yep. Stop pedaling. It works. It bloody works. That's ridiculous. That is just bloody ridiculous. <laughs> That's just crazy, mate. That's awesome. <laughs> Awesome, mate. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Absolutely bloody awesome. Okay, so there it is, our universal e-bike adapter, made for about £15 all told. Now, um, you know, you've got to realise what this is. It's drill powered, so it's going to do about half a kilometre on one charge, something like that. It did push Luke around that car park really quite well. And I was tempted to have a go, but his bike is massive and I'm a short ass. I can't actually get on his bike. Anyway, it worked a treat, to be honest. And as a drill powered attachment and a bit of fun for a kid that's gonna put around the area, I think it'd be awesome. I think the only mistake those people made was they over-engineered it. I mean, it was beautiful. There was this fantastic aluminium bolt-on device, but it was $150. Who's going to spend that for a toy? Something like this. I mean, we, we built it um, 15 quid. If you do have a bit of pressed steel and you were doing it as a run of product, you'd probably get this built for £10, something like that. Retail it at 30 to £40. Pounds. You'd sell this at Christmas time hand over fist, I'm pretty sure. So that would make a great product if it was pulled back a bit. And that's an example of some of the stuff that I talk about where people overdo this stuff. It's not over-engineered, it's just overdone. It's too perfect. It makes a lovely job, but it costs an absolute fortune. This will do the job just fine, works beautifully, looks kind of cool if you paint it the right colour and cost you £10 to have made. There's definitely profit in something like that coming up to Christmas. Anyway, I thought I would give that a go at replicating it because it was a piece of cake and it was a lot of fun and really interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.